So everybody, uh, welcome to the uh, the CommonGear.com podcast. Apologies for the the little bit of a, a lengthy uh, in, re-entry into this week's call. We took a break last week. Um, prior to that, we talked overlanding vehicles, which uh, looks like uh, by our standard, there's uh, quite a few folks who are checking out that that clip. So thank you for doing that. And this week we're looking at uh, what we think is another really interesting segment, which is that of the affordable Ferrari. Now, despite this era we're in, where it seems like everything is just slightly insane in terms of what people are willing to pay, um, these three listings show us there's still um, what we might call some potential normalcy in the collector and sports car market. And certainly if you are looking for a place to get in, where you're going to see your values hold nicely uh, for the foreseeable future, we we feel these um, these three Ferraris are are great great options, and frankly, still even you know kind of surprisingly surprisingly cheap. But they do all have a caveat, which is that um, you know they they they're they're all flawed in some way, right? They they've got something working against them, but at the same time, they're drivers. They're they're intact. They're not in boxes in someone's garage. And you know, for what we started talking about earlier, um, if you want a, a vehicle that you can actually treat as an investment as opposed to just an excessive monthly payment, you will never get back. Uh, these are all great options. So um, let's uh, let's start at the top. We've got a 1983. Oh, I gotta share my screen. Oh, one second it. here. Hold on, Jeff. I will. <laughs> give you that ability you are good now all right so we've got 1983 ferrari mondial quattro valve coupe now this is um to, to me this is a, a so ironic because the mondial for years was just the redheaded stepchild right this was i mean ferrari people hated it car enthusiasts hated it like it was just that's like oh my god it's the it's the worst ferrari it's a poser ferrari it's all these negative things and, and you know it, it was always marketed as kind of the you know quote unquote cheap ferrari but in the day you still had a mid-engine you know almost three liter v8 four valves per cylinder bosch fuel injection 230 horsepower almost as much than uh, almost as much uh, pound pound feet of torque you know rear wheel drive gated shifter like it was always kind of maligned so unfairly but it also had the the classic two plus two uh you know uh scarlet letter on it right you couldn't have a ferrari with the back seat and that is that that's changing quite a bit i mean if you, if you look back at some of the 60s and 70s models in particular all of a sudden we're seeing people kind of say wow maybe we were wrong to judge a Ferrari on the basis of how many of how many warm bodies that could accommodate. So, you know, the Mondial is certainly a car that we've we've seen some of the better examples or, you know, can 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 pull 50 grand uh, these days, which is just sort of unheard of. But uh, at the same time, you're looking for one like this, that's a little bit of a driver, um, 36,000 miles shown, not bad, not super low. You know, this one's got some kind of you know, cheesiness. It's got a respray that, I, you know, my eyes tell me that they they painted over some of the the black uh, cladding or you know black. Uh, you know, I had to look at them. You know, factory new pictures to confirm that. But you know, it's probably got some you know plenty of defects in the paint. Uh, it's obviously got these you know cheapo or not well cheapo by Ferrari standard eighteen inch aftermarket wheels, which don't really look great. Interior is okay, not not terrific, um, and that's all, all been redone as well. I'm really curious about if this has had any sort of engine service. Uh, let's see, service involved, yeah. This has had the big service done. So fuel system, timing belts, spark plugs, tensioners, uh, cooling system, et cetera. So, I mean, this to me is such a, a I mean, what a, what a great entry into Ferrari ownership. You could probably fix some of the cosmetic flaws and make it better, but I wouldn't. I would just I would just live with it as is. And, um, you know, the, the belt service is really the big deal with these. So that's already been done. And yeah, I, for, for owning an actual, you know, classic, you know, one of the best eras of Ferraris, 1980s, uh, this to me is hard to beat. What, what do you guys think? I think it's a dog, personally. Now, John's <laughs> going to disagree. 
You know what? Actually, I'll go ahead and say John will actually be very much on my side here. I'm just going to say that before I go. Put a little pressure on him. Hmm. Dude, it's kind of like... Interesting. Interesting strategy. No, it's just like, let's guys, see, let's just see the really, no, seriously, really sit here and think about it. So what is it, okay? It's not really... So it's not doesn't really have Ferrari performance. Right? Probably, it's, probably to... it's probably a dog. No. It does have Ferrari probably reliability. And if you wanted to get this thing serviced and the cost of parts and all that stuff, it probably does have all those features, which is not a good thing. And then it really doesn't have, in my opinion, the stunning looks like when you see a Ferrari from the eighties or even a little bit later, like the, those older three, five, fives or the three, two eights. I mean, it's really like, man, that is a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. This thing almost looks like they took a two, eight, eight, or um, a three two eight, and they they just kind of went like this with it, and they crunched it together. And it's like those seats tell you one thing that it really is not necessarily a sports car. It's more of like a touring cruiser. I mean, look at the picture of the seats. You're not driving this thing, man. That thing's a dog. Huge. The bus wheel. So it has the bus wheel. It has the comfort seats that are totally flat. And, and here's the thing, the people who don't know what it is, it's like, yeah, you're kind of fooling them with your $30,000 Ferrari, but the joke's kind of on you at the end of the day. And the people who do know what it is, you're kind of a meme. Like, honestly, man, I don't know. John, what do you think? I, it's just a no for me. I just feel like Ferrari, when you think of the name, when you buy into that brand, you take all the bad because of all the good it comes with. And I'm not sure that this really has any of the good. Like if you pull up in a 458, you're a dickhead, a red 458. You're a dick, man. But on the way home, nine grand, what -um, what -um. that's that's the kind of the good you get from it. F1 technology, you know, this this doesn't have any of the good. What's good about it? In my opinion. In my I wouldn't, opinion. I wouldn't call this, I wouldn't go as far as Lars is calling it a dog. Oh, I mean, it's actually, it's, I'm, I'm actually, I got really excited about this, about this, about this list, about these three cars, Jeff is, you know, when I was on vacation last fall, I read this book called, let me sell you a Ferrari. It was written by the guy who was the local Ferrari deal for 30 years. Um, and what was cool about this era, these era Ferraris that we're going to be talking about tonight is this is when Ferrari was more human, had more character, when it wasn't as corporate as it is today, where they kind of just did things on the whim and they didn't communicate, you know, and they were kind of flighty Italians. Um, there's a great story when they brought the Mondial, the first time the, the dealer principal saw Mondial, was a journalist brought one by and said, oh, Ferrari, think about importing this to the U.S., and he, and actually it was funny, I was, I was like, oh, what did the dealer think of the Mondial? And he absolutely loved it. It's, it's kind of a, we it's a weird car. It doesn't, it, you know, we go from the seventies, you know, and we, you know, look at the Dino. The Dino is really unloved. This is almost mm. like the evolution of that, of that seventies Dino. And then we get to the eighties with the three, with, you know, the three twenty eights and the two eight GTOs. And, you know, you're, you're buying this car today because you're, you're in, you want a Ferrari, you know, you it's, it's in your price range. It's, it's a Ferrari. Um, it doesn't move the needle for me, but there is that character aspect of it. And, you know, as you talked about, all these cars are flawed tonight. And this one is flawed. You know, the 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 seller came out and said right away, hey, there's a bunch of cosmetic issues. The glove box isn't open. The passenger window doesn't work. The trim on the dash needs replacement. And we've rust in the rear frame and underside component components. Yo, where is this out of, Jeff? Let's see. So it's a rust box, too. Where's it? I didn't see the rust uh, concerns. He said rust. He said he they like spray painted rust oleum. I can't like was, believe uh, Enzo signed off on this shit. Well, you remember too, like Enzo. Hey. Enzo was, he was the Enzo. Was Enzo, you, Enzo did the, Enzo did this to finance the racing. As uh, exactly. the, thing, the thing with yeah, Enzo okay. Ferrari like, was well, everything valid. was cars were built to finance the racing side, and you know valid. here's a mass mar here's like the air quotes mass market Ferrari where you know where you can you know. You know, I'm sure the F1 budget was eating up a ton of funds in those days. And also this was still kind of under, you know, Ferrari at this point was still under fiat control or was oh, under fiat control. So, you know, it's, so it's the same thing as a, 
the Cayenne and, and the uh, in the Macan today that that's what Porsche sells mo- most yeah. of to. And they stewed in the early two thousands. It saved its ass. It's, saved it's it. yeah. I mean this. I mean this. It totally is. A flawed, it's a flawed. V- I mean all these cars are flawed. And this is kind of the the redhead stepchild flawed v- flawed vehicle of A's Ferrari. Jeff, yeah. so are, 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 you, are you getting are you getting a deal? I don't know. Jeff, would you I ever consider it. purchasing? No. This. Not like it was not like right now. Like, would you? No, I wouldn't. Up thirty five grand, but like in theory, if it was like, yeah, I got a bunch of money, like that, I could want to spend. You're on. you're buying this because you're a Ferrari. You're buying this because you're a Ferrari diehard, and this is the one car you can afford. I I would buy it. So I I probably bought. That's a good vehicles. call, John. That's a good call. <clears throat> so exactly, I would I would buy it as sort of a, an experiment, right? <laughs> Where like what I kind of envision is. Interesting. Yeah. So, well, because my whole mindset is always, let's just say I've got 50K sitting there, right? Mm. And so that's not going to buy me even a decent, like it, it's going to buy me a project grade um, 993, 911, which is my white whale, right? I, I, I want, you know, a 993 C2S. That's, you know, my, <laughs> that, that, that's the car I want to end up with more than that's your dream. Else. Is that really your dream attainable car? It's my realistic dream car. Yeah, I just I think it's a great I think it's a great car both from a future value standpoint and also just Good for you, a man. Car you can drive every day. So, but but let's just say though, but the fifty k is not going to buy me one of those, right? Where oh, right box. Exactly, and and it would need another twenty five to thirty thousand dollars in work. It's whereas there's part of it. So so my mind says, like, well, I don't want to like deny myself. You know, I don't want to say like what. Well, so therefore, I'm just going to like not have anything cool. So then it's like, if I could buy one of these, like I'm like this, that r- runs and drives pretty well, has a big service done. And, you know, I wouldn't, my big thing is that I, I do think they spray sprayed over what should be black uh, mm. body paneling. But like, if it didn't have that, I'm thinking, hey, I think it'd be pretty slick to put a 2B exhaust on it, oh, put it on oh, some, oh. some BBS LMs and have a really interesting i just gotta hear mm. all these things sound yeah, like a that, that is a really good point because you could with this car you can make it kind of your spec yeah, like so you're like, not you're not worried about keeping it original and pristine because it's not like a collector car but you can make this your you know your 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 outlaw you know it's all right you guys we can't hear it so just go and uh, do the cold start video if you want. Uh, Sorry about that, guys. I'm watching a uh, video of one straight pipes. I'm sure it sounds great. Yo, eight, it revs to 8,000? Yeah. Oh, okay, Jeff. You have so my, anyway. Jeff, you had my uh, interest. Now you have my curiosity. So that so I think that's more where I, like I understand the... Um, the sentiment, Lars, 100%, that this is not something that, like, you necessarily say, I just cannot wait to own an mm. 83 Mondial. Like, absolutely, 100%. I, I'm with you all the way on that. But if you're if you're sitting in a position where you're like, okay, so I'm never going to own anything cool because 50K doesn't buy you anything cool anymore, or I'm going to say, you know what, if this is if this is what I can achieve, this is it's 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 still a a mid-engined V8 Ferrari. You know, I think that's where I end up on it. You know what? I actually did just watch a video once straight piped and yeah. Not bad. Uh, now it sounds like a Ferrari, dude. Honestly, I'd pay I'd pay 30 grand just to like downshift that actually. You know what, dude? It's still Ferrari, I guess. Yeah, I'm just it's, I, I want to now you, you got me wanting to Ferrari. <laughs> Yo, yeah, second I mean, one, second one, no, second one, second one, second one. Okay, all right. Jeez. I know, we're, we're dragging this on. Go to, um, <laughs> Jeff, go to three minutes and 30 seconds. You the horrible fire. Yeah, this, this, thing's, this thing's a demon. Three minutes, 30 seconds. That's where I was watching. It was pretty decent. <laughs> No, she opens it up. Look at it. Yeah. I mean, dude. 
<laughs> the eight grand, dude, that's a Rari. You can hear it. I would be, I would be so happy with that. Yeah. I'd be so happy with that. Rari, but it's also so you're, you're going to pay 30 some 35 grand for just the sound. I know. Oh, also in mint I, E92 M3. I guess that's a bad comparison, but like that's just kind of how I think about it. It's yeah. Like, that's that's great, so much more it's a, hard. It's 100% accurate. 100% like, accurate. I can drive that car across the country and it's, you know, I can just really use it. This is like, and, that, and that is a legit, and, and at the end of the day, you're still paying uh, 15 grand for a, an a engine out belt service on a Mondial. And it's like, yeah. dude, what would you do if you had to do that? What would you do? Oh, it'd be off. Grand on, the, on that thing? And maybe I'm over, I'm, I'm, I'm over, but I mean, it's in that ballpark. Mm, right? Even if it's, 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 dude, even if it's 10. Right. That's and, and that, and then that sort of, your purchase price. And that sort of flips a little bit of my argument on his head because that's like, okay, yeah, but now you're 45 into it. And you better really, you better really like that. So, I mean, I, I think the caveat being buy one of these with that belt service already done. Don't yeah. be. And, now, and, and now you're it. getting into E28 M5 territory. And if you want a cool <laughs> 80s car, you're screwing up. You yeah. know, with the belt, if you want to round it up to 45 with like an existing belt service, now you're right. starting to like 50K. Now you're really starting to push it. So then, it, then it, not for yeah. me, but cool. That's where I'll leave it on that one. Not for me, but it's cool. I agree. Uh, let's uh, we'll hop on to the next one here. Okay, so this, this is a '87 Ferrari Testarossa that sold for seventy-two-five, which has got to be the, one of the cheapest ones ever. What's the model? Uh, uh, Twenty-three thousand. Now this one had huh. what was it? It's had a. It's had a life. It's had some. Yeah, it's, 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 it's seen. It's seen some things, as they say. Uh, <laughs> No I, I, yeah, I'll just so. I'll just say what was in my notes that it has gaps in its history. It has a salvage slash rebuilt title. It was in an accident in two thousand one. Scratches all over the vehicle, dings and dents, rust on the windshield cowl and driver's side door, and seller states time belts need to be replaced and dashboard is recommended to be recovered. Wait, this is the one that actually has the stupid timing belt service, right? Because it's at the firewall of the engine. It, yeah. Which so it's basically the timing belt is right behind your back. When we look at this, is kind of hilarious. Whoever the owner was, this garage of the giant Cartman <laughs> figure. <laughs> Guys, over seventy two k, man. Imagine you get the belt zone and you just beat the hell out of this thing. Be I, cool. Yeah, I. So, you know, here's the thing, though. That's I mean, cheap, dude. All right, let's hear it, Jeff. Well. It's like, well, so here's the, like this video right here. So this guy that this thing sitting here running, idling, knowing full well the belt service hasn't been done. Like that terrifies me mm. as, as someone who generally tries to buy um, interesting cars with decent, you know, it, you know, my, my usual buying strategy is either it, like it's so awful that it's just laughably cheap or it's a really decent car with all the you know the boxes checked or whatever. so kind of always like belt services of, i don't care what car it is that even that audi v8 quattro from a few weeks ago you know that car is one of those vehicles that if you don't have the belt service done it's, it's a paperweight right if, if that if that belt lets go so i'm like i see this i'm just like holy god dude, you have that car sitting your idling and you have no idea when that timing belt was done, you know, it needs to be done. And you're just like, that. just, that's just scared the hell out of me. I mean, good, good for him. Maybe he's more of an optimist than I am. Um, so that's, I think that's more like kind of like the, the first thing I thought, like, I really, how, how can you, how can you feel comfortable doing it? Where I, I would be like, yeah, I'm not running the car. You are welcome to come by and sign a, a, dis, a disclaimer affidavit, whatever that says, if you started up and the motor grenade, you're, liable to you know rebuild it so it, it just that, that was the first thing that kind of set me off about this car but um i get it too you know maybe, maybe you're someone who is just so cut like you, you just grew up around these cars you know it's, you can tell in the background he's he's kind of got a thing for um you know what what, what, what do we see here we see that's the ferrari engine maserati that's mm. kind of a, a bargain right now and i, I yeah. don't know if that's it that's a three yeah it's an it's like an f430 yeah yeah 
Okay, yeah, it's so, a good ball. It is. So, so, I mean, this guy is probably more like, hey, listen, I've been around these things all my life. It doesn't phase me. I'm not really worried about it. You know, you, you'll see a check engine light. You'll see some other, like, uh, you know, a, a warning sign that the belt, you know, about to let go. Anyway, um, but at the same time, the Testarossa is an icon. I think it's one of the most instantly recognizable Ferraris. Like it, it's kind of like if if uh, if Tom Selleck had driven one of these instead of a three hundred eight in Magnum PI, like we, we wouldn't even know that the three hundred eight existed because it, you know this, this this has that that you know it is the, the ultimate expression of eighty styling. It was like the poster car. I mean, it really did give the Countach a run for its money in terms of just iconic supercar, you know, dream car status, you know, 10 years old, you got the poster on your wall. Obviously Don Johnson drove the white one in Miami mm, Vice. I was really just say, you don't forget Miami Vice. Yep. So it really did have, I mean, it just, in addition to being a legitimate performance car, and again, by the standards of the era, a very impressive one, it just had so many other things that just, that that went you know went and worked in its favor. I don't think you can do badly on one of these in terms of if you buy one cheap and and do have to put thirty to forty thousand into it, which you you absolutely will with this car. However, one thing you know in the last two three years, as you guys know, I've tried to really be a little more consistent in you know selling a vehicle each year. Right, you're just putting you know trying to to, to sell something for some profit to you know, to, 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 you know, recoup what I spent elsewhere. And the thing that I cannot get over in, in that, what people really value is clean histories, low mileage, like people, buyers will accept so many other sins, right? Mm-hmm. They will live with so many other, so much other risk. They, they will take on risk. Uh, that to me makes no sense to take on if a car is simply low mileage, clean history. So, I, you know, if you're buying this, you're you're someone like me, kind of going back to what we just talked about, where you're like, hey, this is my one chance to own a Testarossa for under 100K. I, I get it over the next 10 years, I'm going to put another 50,000 into it. And I should have just waited and bought one for 100K, but I, but that's not how the budgeting works, right? You, you know, you buy one at a price point you can afford and you just say to yourself, okay, so I'm going to roll this money into it. Um, but hey, it's better than like saying I'm gonna wait till I have the money and then finding out, oh well, you know something else happened and I still can't buy it. So I, I do credit the buyer of this, who's probably someone looking at the long game. However, I just hope that they're not thinking long game like I'm going to sell this for big money in the next twenty years because that the the title issue or the history issue mm-hmm. and um, you know the the fact that it, it's not. Yeah, because it doesn't have that sort of pedigree history that people in the space tend to look for. That's always going to hold it back. But uh, if you're going to hold on to it for 30 to 40 years, where these cars get to a point where then no one cares anymore because it's just a vintage Ferrari and there and there just are none left to buy. Um, you know, a long game could be a, a winning strategy here, but I just, I would hope you're not playing short game here because in, in the near term, even at this price point, the, um, the history is going to scare away the purest mm. from spending real money on it. I want to love this car so much, but it just scares me. It really, as yeah. you mentioned, Jeff, you, you, you know, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're buying a low mileage Ferrari for Testarossa, you know, for 72, but you're putting, you're going to be putting in at least two thirds of that into, you know, to getting this car right. And if you look at the photos close up, it is really scary. Well, there's it a is. Lot I, of I agree. Really, there is a lot of scary images. So whoever is buying this, you know, I maybe you own a for an independent Ferrari shop, or you're you have the assets and you have a good you know dealer that you can, you know, a good you know yeah. repair person you can make this car right. But like. The body lines are all messed up. It's it. it's a it's, it's a scare. It's you know I want to as I as I just said I want to love it, but I but looking at it and reading history, I just want to run away from it, which is really yeah. really difficult because when you first sent these, I was like, oh Testarossa, you know, at some you, oh this is gonna be awesome. And I was like, oh, it's like yeah. finding out the girl that you're in love with has like multiple varenial diseases. Yeah, you know, that's this is what it, this is this is this is a downer. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, even just stuff like this, you're just like, man, this, yeah. this car has just been. Yeah, abused. you want to know what what it's what it's been through, right? Yeah, it's it's definitely really really rough. Um, but again, if this thing, you know, you could get this thing okay mechanically. I almost feel like there's a certain. I mean, guys, there's an Astro every seat, right? There's almost obviously that's the case because this is <laughs> sold, right? Yeah. Um, but I'm with you, John. Yeah, it's scary as hell. All the body work and all the stuff you'd have to do to make this thing right. It looked like there was some rust forming on the windshield, um, right under that, like kind of. It's in, one, it's in one of the first pictures, actually, Jeff. If you just kind of scroll, yeah, through the I thought, yeah, I, yeah, but I thought it was really. Bottom scary. line, it is a little rough, but dude, here's the thing: it's not rough like you see a car like yeah it's got holes in the rockers and yeah the frame's starting to rust like you know you shouldn't drive it i mean cosmetically into ferrari standards yeah man it's it's banged up but i mean i bet i'd, I'd call my e30 really really clean i bet it has similar damage you know maybe a panel is maybe pushed down or there's a little rust bubble somewhere honestly if this thing was okay mechanically it's a 20 footer. Someone sees you in traffic. They don't know. They, yeah. they don't know. It's all banged up. It looks yeah, like a Tesla right. Rosa. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if this thing pulled up to the meet or a car show and I saw it all banged up like this, I'd be like, if, if it was in good condition, I don't even think I would have the urge to say anything to the owner or try to find him. But if I saw this thing all banged up, I'd be like, Hey, like what, what's going on with this thing? What's the story? It looks like it's been, you know, it's been yeah. stuff. And Obviously, with a newer car, you know, if, if there was a new GT3 all banged up, it's like, dude, bring that to the freaking service center. But on older yeah, cars like this, the reason I love old cars, not just because they're analog and before all the technology and screens, is because, like, you guys know the, the, the saying, if the walls could speak, you know, all the stories that have happened mm -hmm. in this house or place. That's what makes it cool. And it's like, at some point, man, someone was driving this thing and they banged it up. And all these years later... It's a 40 year old car and it's still driving around. And I, I don't know what a good one goes for. I probably should have looked that up while you guys were, were talking, but I, I want to say they're like 150. To yeah, they're, grand yeah, they are. So if, uh, this thing, yeah. if this thing was mechanically, okay, you would throw an exhaust on it. Maybe you have a, a buddy of yours who owns a body shop, slightly take care of some of the, the obvious things um yeah they're like 150 grand this one 220 they're kind of rare 250 140 so i don't know for 75 if, if you just love the car and you're just ready to drive the piss out of this thing kind of cool but i will also say it's not really like a like an old 911 you want to drive the piss out of that thing this is more so a touring car it's a little bit bigger it's a little bit wider maybe a little heavier but I mean, it's, well, I think it's kind of for 70, for 70 K. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, I mean, even with my concern, notwithstanding there's, I, I think that it's hard to ignore that, whether you're looking at it as, you know, like I said, a long-term ownership restoration or just get the belts fixed and drive the doors off of it. I mean, there's about, <laughs> there's value in either scenario and um, I mean, I think, I think the, the winning bidder, even with the concerns here, I mean, it's still hard not to go out to the garage and say, holy crap, there's the test just sitting out yeah. there. Yeah, you dude. know, that's gotta be an amazing, uh, amazing feeling, especially if you're close to the, the Joe six pack type who, who doesn't have the, the bank account to buy six of these in a week. So, uh, you know, good for them. I hope, uh, I hope the car is, you know, I hope it's something that gets seen often and driven with some of the flaws because it's just so rare. You see a supercar come out to play that is somewhat uh, battle scarred. It's just, it's a, it's a super cool thing when you do see it. Um, so get the belts done, live with the fact that your body panels don't line up and uh, yeah. And, and enjoy knowing, you know, I mean, I mean, think about it. Think about telling Think about it, you bought this like when your kids are young and they don't really know what it is. And they're like, by the time they're 16, 17, they're like, holy shit, dad, dad, dad had the Testarossa in the garage. I mean, that, that's, yeah, but that's, how much is it? How much is it? How cool is it going to be when you realize it's a complete shit box? Well, um, that's that's valid, 100% valid. And you'll never really get much love from the 
the uh, the purest crowd. So I mean, you have to kind of be content with. But knowing. but even for, but even forget the purest crowd. Like it, it's like anyone if you you do the ship a ship box a ship box you know, like yeah yeah no I I I mean that's a honestly that was one of the things that creeped into my head with you know my much smaller uh, scale of uh, ownership with with mm-hmm. with that Dakota pickup was I was just right. kind of like man, this thing is kind of shitty. Like, it's just, I didn't, I didn't feel great uh, driving it after a while. And, um, you know, I, I mean, maybe there are people out there that never gets into their head, but I mean, I, I agree with you, John, there'd be a part of you that, is, I mean, you have to really be like psychologically, like the, the prospect of owning a test for us were just so significant, you know, yeah. as, aspirational for you that you'd be like, yeah, I don't care. Like I, I, I got into one of these cars at a price point. I never thought I'd be able to, and, and you just kind of can move on. But um, if there's any party that's like, well, I really probably could have stretched the extra 25 to 30 K and bought a better one. That's going to keep you up at night for sure. Mm. Um, so let's, uh, let's jump on to our third and final one. That's, this is a, this is probably one of the more interesting cars in the group. So this, this is a car owned by Tyler Hoover for a while. He, mm-hmm. If you follow him, you probably saw on YouTube a few months or for years ago. Uh, it says, you know, it's 348 TS, uh, total driver quality car, over a hundred thousand miles, true mileage unknown. You know, he bought this as sort of an, you know, a way to show you could get into uh, a higher mileage Ferrari without it being a totally uh, nightmarish experience. He put these, I think the one thing he did was he put those Ricards in there that had the really, you know, kind of epic 90s style upholstery pattern. Mm-hmm. It's, um, you know, the, the 348 is a really, uh, to me, is probably one of my favorite Ferraris out there right now. If, if, if I were to be sent, you know, want to buy a Ferrari in the next uh, few months, the 348 is absolutely where I'd go. It's got, uh, it's, you know, it's mid engine. V8, awesome styling. Uh, it's it's a very 90s car. I've always loved the fact that it still had the side streaks like a Testarossa and it also had sort of that, you know, the grid across the taillights. Um, you know, it was kind of just a, like, to me, it was always like a little bit of a bridge car, mm-hmm. right? Where you had sort of that, those iconic 80s uh, styling cues, but then it was clearly a 90s car. Like you had no doubt you had moved on from the uh, the Testarossa era with this car, you know, the pop-up headlights. It was just, uh, I thought, a very, very attractive Ferrari. And this is, you know, if we thought the Mondial sounded good with a straight pipe exhaust, the 348 sounds absolutely uh, maniacal. You know, in terms of what you get out of this car for the investment, how it sounds, it's... Um, it's a very good, a uh, very good equation, you know, mathematical equation in terms of uh, what, what you get out of it for the relative investment. So, you know, this particular car is, um, you know, I think you just have to live with the fact that it's always going to be a driver, but at the same time, it's not nearly as as terrifying as that Testarossa, right? So it's it's a driver without necessarily that that same potentially uh devastating history like this is a driver because it's been driven and enjoyed and uh people kept up with the maintenance and just kept putting miles on it which shows you know you can own a car like this without uh without having to put it you know keep it keep it to under five thousand miles every year so this one i I believe did have the belt service done um let's see if that was mentioned here in the listing uh recent service history so he didn't so Tyler, who actually, maybe not, I, it doesn't say anything here about belt servicing. So um, maybe not, maybe this still needs that, but under 50 K, I mean, 46,000, this to me was the winner of the group from a value standpoint, because it's way cheaper than that Testarossa. It's only a few bucks more than the Mondial. And I think 348 is, is always going to have a much better value trajectory than the Mondial will. Mm-hmm. So to, to me, this was a, a great buy um all day long and, and again the 348 is it, to me it's the attainable ferrari that's the one i'd want to buy if it was uh, on the on the on the list of possibilities what do you guys think go ahead john yeah i'm jeff you kind of echoed a lot of my comments this was uh the three this would be the one i would go with and this is probably the best the deal of the day um you know it does you know it's it's in pretty good shape you know we've then one of the cool parts about YouTube and, you know, Tyler Hoover is that we've seen this car. So you kind of, you know, we've seen this car on YouTube. So, you know what you're getting, um, you know, this is one of Tyler Hoover's favorite cars. He's mentioned it on, he's mentioned it several occasions in various videos. Uh, it's a great driver's car, you know, as you mentioned. And one question I'll throw it to you guys. 
Do you think because this is a Hoobies Garage card, it changes the value? Yes. Yeah, I think there's definitely some luster there. And I think it's almost like, dude, it, it kind of, because buying a car like this, also, Jeff, go to that picture on the top right. Um, it's It almost takes away, because if you buy one of these things sight unseen, um, it's kind of like, okay, what's the deal with this? That's a cool photo. Look, right guys, there. look at that thing. That, that, that looks that... like, dude, you know what that looks like? That looks like a 71 Challenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it does. Like, what? It that does. thing is disgusting. It's meaty. Yeah. That thing looks so with the quad exhaust, and you can see the transaxle. This is all. Look at the, look how the front tire, like, you can actually see the front tire. Like, just in terms oh of the my, way that. Dude, the, it's the disgusting. Yeah. It's like an M Coupe or something, but like on steroids. And right. we're talking like, I'm not a cheap Ferrari hater. This just proves that. I was shitting on Bobby <laughs> all a little bit, but this thing is what, 8K more? This is a car where I would open my garage and I would be like this. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> and I would get frosty. You would be happy to, you would be happy to drive Oh, that. look at this, this little thing, throw the roof off. I'd wake up early to drive this. I'd wash it on Sundays. I'd put it in the garage and I'd always make sure <laughs> everything was closed tightly. It really is a cool car and the fact that I, I, John, to your point, I think the fact that people saw it be driven and, you know, it was up on a lift and he did stuff to it and the fluids were changed and okay, it's been working for him. Dude, 40 yeah. grand, this thing is sick for 40 grand. Oh, My yeah. My E92 M3 argument does not work on this because no. <laughs> this is probably a little bit freaking cooler. And again, you do exhaust and you have, it like, does have, it does have an exhaust. I think it does have an exhaust on it. Yeah. Dude, it has, it has thing, a Capristo. The, oh, this thing is is more than a forty thousand dollar experience. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Got the rolling in the night crew. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's 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 worn, but it's comfortably worn. Like you know, you're you're going to be comfortable driving this car. It it uh, Jeff, you said it. it's 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 a great drive. It's like the perfect driver's quality Ferrari right there. Right. And 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 as you mentioned Phenomenal. too, it's also that it's it's that great. You know, I talked about earlier the from corporate Ferrari to like old school Ferrari, and this is kind of when that transition almost started beginning. You know, Enzo Enzo died, I think eighty eight. This is a you know, I think these cars came out eighty nine ninety. So this is when you're starting to see a transition from old school to new school Ferrari right here, and which is really kind of interesting as well. And those seats too, I I think those seats are really wild looking, and uh, and they're yeah, they're and honestly, really they're really neat in such a cool, fun '90s way. Yeah, yeah, that was a good choice. I love those. I love the slat design language from uh, Ferrari in this era with with the slats on the side. We saw the same thing in the Testarossa, and the slats on the I don't know if that's the word like the. You know, it's like the shingles on like on mm. the side fenders and on the taillights. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And dude, this car for 40. See, Jeff, this one has me and John. This one has me a little bit frothy. Mm-hmm. This one, it's like yeah. oh, 40 yeah. grand. I would, you know, the, the services, I'm sure. Yeah, let's see what's up with this. Um, how much was that? Two thousand dollars for what? Uh, an armrest. Okay, zoom out. That's all it was. An armrest and a tie rod. All right, two grand. You know that's that's tough. Uh, let's see if you. So you guys, I will say one thing. I want to clarify. You, you mentioned that the uh, the the ownership added some value here. I I don't know that I would agree with that. I mean, I think if you are going for that as a as a business model, like you want to. Um, get some continued visibility for your own brand or whatever out of it. Um, maybe I don't really know that Tyler Hoover is at this point enough of a celebrity celebrity to warrant you know factoring into the um, in, into the value proposition hmm. here. I don't know that I, I like him. I enjoy what he does. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I was curious to see, especially with this new generation of you know automotive enthusiast celebrities. Does you know. Does is is it a D is is there a Tyler Hoover bump? Um, maybe a few grand, man. I, I I do think it helps that it was like documented. He drove it. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think that I I agree with you, Lars. I think that's where that's where it helps. The price is that you've seen this car, you've seen it take, you've seen Tyler Hoover tickets through its travels. You know, because for all you know, it was sitting in a freaking garage for. I mean, I guess the service. Never mind. I guess there's some records on there, but yeah, it's that helps. It is 100K miles. Dude, you know what? 
guys, we all know this. These cars back then, every single make and manufacturer, I guarantee it, and just from personal experience, they were all just built better. They're all just so, built better. So th- I just want to call it, to, you know, so this, this invoice is the belt service along with a few other things. I mean, this is, it, it's 10 still grand. 10 grand. So, I mean, you know, the, the, that is the other side of this, right? Is you really do have to be okay. No, yeah, and that's why you can never, uh, that's why it's. Like, that's where I always fall short of wanting to, to like even like selling a bunch of stuff to, to buy it. It's like, that just breaks my brain. Well, this is a car. I, when you buy it, you're not, that's no, 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 you don't, you're not just buying it. It's like Jeff, like with the E30, for example, you've, you've said this about yours. It's like, you can buy one and you can basically just drive it like a normal car, but right. this, you can't, you can't buy this and have 500 bucks in your bank account. No, 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 no. no. So, so <laughs> and that's, and that's where I'm always <clears throat> torn. Like, you know, I'd have to, even with this, even with everything we're saying here about how great this is, um, I think you'd have to, you know, I, I, my, my, my concern with these is always my, my, the owner of my primary mechanic, you know, he's a big Porsche guy, uh, obviously, you know, grew up on Porsches, grew up, you know, racing ratty yeah. 350, 356s and speedsters like that was just his, his upbringing. You know, he, he'll, he'll say like, it wasn't until like the, um, the 360 came along that he actually thought, Ferrari was building a a competent sports car. He was like, he said, up until that point, every time I get in one, I, I'd always just be like, why are people paying this kind of money for this driving experience? Like he said it was just archaic. He said it never felt like anything went together at the same time. Like they 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 put the engine in without actually considering. I've heard you know, that too. You know what the drive ideal driving position would be, or, or the the throw from the gearbox to your hand. And he's like, I always. Oh, get I've back. heard all that same crap. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, man, I've never. I rode in a 430. That's my claim to fame. Rode in a 430. <laughs> but now I've never actually driven one. So I don't know. Neither do I. Um, yeah. But that, that's why, and I do come back to that because, again, even you, you could, you know, I, uh, as Gerbo knows, my, my brother has had an 86 911 for a very long time. And you I, can own, you know, have you driven that? I have. And it's, Talk? uh, Oh, it's awesome. I mean, it, the, the, <laughs> the noise is fantastic. You cannot get... Is it a I mean, turbo? Noise, no, no, it's a standard no. you know, air cool. Standard career. And, um, and uh, you know... It's a, is it it's overrated? A, what's that? Is it overrated? Um, Or is it really like, damn, that's... It's like, that is it. it, it it's overrated if you think it's going to be like this incredible performance car. It's, it's no. not... It's, it's just not a that. really nice car to drive, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. What are they like? Two says two seventy horse. It's not a rocket ship. Um, but he would. But again, going back to my mechanic, he'll, he'll say like, you can get into one of those, and even if it's not fast by today's standard, it still drives. Like how you'd expect a, a you right. know a top top line sports car to drive. Where he said like, like Ferraris up to a certain point, he always found extremely disappointing. Uh, compared to the Porsches, so I don't know. I, I think that again, you're you're buying a a three six a car like this for much different reasons, which is it's a mid engine V eight. It's it's a screamer. It's incredible styling, and as far as Ferraris go, if you can get past that that you know big ten thousand dollar maintenance hit, you've got a pretty special car. That I mean, I, I honestly would have a hard time. I, Dude, that's it's very. Is- that thing looks so good from the rear. It's a Look pretty at car. the taillights. It's like, that's just so OG. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, and yeah. That, I mean, that picture from the rear, I, I actually, you know what, guys? That changed my, pre- I, I've never seen one presented like that. It's all yeah, about it's, how, I've never seen, dude, guys, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's oh a fan. This is one of the best photos of a 348 ever taken. Quite if honestly. anyone says, why do you like the 348? Show them that photo and they will shut the hell up. Dude, look at the trans. The whole transaxle yeah. just sitting there. You can <laughs> someone sitting behind you. What is what is that whole big metal thing? Yeah, it's just trans. It's right. so cool. So cool. So I think uh, I mean this has been a real fun, a fun discussion about you know just how it is possible to buy a Ferrari for not crazy money. Uh, obviously, you have to make concessions in every every scenario here, uh, whether it's just you know on dial or the you know which is. Uh, you know, kind of the 
Yeah, it, it's hey, it's, it's the cheapest way into this uh, this world if you want to be part of it, but you still got to pay the the piper as it relates to the maintenance cost. And at the end of the day, you're <laughs> you're putting that money into a, a car that probably is not. I, I mean, I think I think every Ferrari, just like every Porsche, is is going to appreciate. You know, they're not going to go down, but you're going to live with the fact you're at the bottom of the totem pole. But you, you should. Have- and it might cancel out with the maintenance too, you know? Yeah, yeah. I agree. You know, none, none of these cars absolve you from paying the going rate for maintenance on one of these. So, mm-hmm. uh, so between that, you know, the Testarossa, obviously to get into one of these, this kind of money, you have to live with owning a freight pig, which um, is, mm-hmm. is, is definitely a uh, risky proposition when it comes to getting your money out of it. But to me all day long, 348 remains an outstanding value. Dude, and, all day yeah. long. Yeah. That's the car. Um, and real quick, while we're just sitting here, I'm just, I just want to, this is bring a trailer, but I just want to see uh, what some of the other recent, other recent Yeah. That's actually, that, dude, that's a really interesting proposition for a car to pick up. Like, I, I, I would commend someone for buying one of those. So, uh, I mean, not that expensive. 50K. What's what a TS? I forget what that touring sport or something. So let, me, let me look it up very quick. I mean, look at, but look at this. You know, these are 54, 50. Um, this is the spider. Oh, like a target top? It's the uh, convertible. There we the, go. Oh, okay. the, 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 T, the TB is like the coupe, and the, the TS is the convertible. Um, the spider. So even on, even on oh. that, I mean, you can get one of these for. You know, when they're in driver condition, you know, as far as, you know, mileage goes, uh, I mean, look at this, this is just as a, as a comparison, a 90 for 60K, how many miles? 38,000 miles. That's kind of amazing. Um, clean Carfax. I don't know if it's, this, but yeah. So, I mean, I, I think, yeah. but, but I want that one that Hoovy had. I want to make sure it looks like it like, looks like that exact, exact <laughs> setup. But this is a car that you're, you're not going to, this will change because everyone knows this is this is a these are decent Ferraris, okay? Ferrari standard. You know, even as a cheap Ferrari, this is a decent Ferrari. And so this is going to change at some point where these are not going to be sub ninety thousand dollar cars. I so there's there definitely a part of me that looks at these and says, yeah, if you want to get into one of these, um, you wait, do, do you guys do you guys totally love the way the Testarossa looks? You totally love it. I do. Like it's absolutely beautiful. Jeff, right? Jeff and I are both child's, ch- children of the eighties too. So, yeah, yeah I'll be but, honest. I like the way the, all these ones look, like the three, four, eight, and then I don't know. Basically, everything we're looking at right now. But dude, something about the Testarossa it just looks so big. Doesn't it kind of look like a little like it's like the three, four, eight, but it's just so much bigger. It seems like for no reason. Yeah, it, it's a bit. I mean, it, it's the proportions are such that it, it is not what you would call a live car. <laughs> right. Um, the 348, means. that thing looks like a little friggin' race car, doesn't it? Look at this for you know, a spider 43k, 33,000 mm. miles, belt service done. Yeah, I actually like and the silver too. The silver is kind of classic. So silver, good. The silver works, it does. Yeah, the silver, and as much as you want red in a Ferrari, the silver is really, really nice. Um, so anyway, I think, yeah, by you know, far and away, uh, 348. Yeah, my vote's better. there too. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you for uh, the time. As always, this was a fun one. Um, you know, I, I, I Ferraris, uh, no doubt, have a place, a big place in automotive history, and uh, there's no going wrong with with owning a good one. But uh, as this 348 shows, there there's an opportunity for mere mortals to get into this world, provided you have. Uh, I think you need to have an annual maintenance budget of upward to 20k socked away, which is still a big a big ask for anyone uh not jeff bezos level of wealth but um it's certainly in a realm of possibility you know if, if you can if you can that's if you can make those terrible. make those concessions that you know and then the trade-off is you, you're driving <laughs> an absolutely you know a beautiful car with incredible noise and presence and uh and a, and a lineage that is 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 very hard to top you know for anything else in that in that price bracket so um Thank you all for watching. Thanks, John and Lars, for participating. As always, we'll be back here sometime in the next two weeks with another roundup of intriguing collector 
specialty vehicles that are found on the predominant digital auction platforms. And we'll discuss which one makes the best sense or which one seems like an absolute ripoff, as sometimes is the case on this podcast. And if you ever have a uh, chance to check out the commongear.com, it is a terrific place to store and track your maintenance investments in cars like these. So that when it does come time to sell, there's no question you have had that belt service done, though the next owner is comfortable spending top dollar on their purchase of your specialty vehicle. So check out the commongear.com, start storing and scanning your records with us today and tracking all of your project and specialty car investments. Uh, With that said, thank you guys. I will see you next week.